everybody welcome to blades in the dark week number three of season two my name is matt i'm joined by michael ian emily and anthony we're finally back after taking a couple weeks off to enjoy christmas with our families and friends and uh yeah i'm excited to play some blades in the dark how is everybody this evening i'm doing well good good well, let's go around and check in with everybody. Anthony, how have you been since we last uh, checked in two weeks ago? Oh, pretty good. Uh, Christmas happened. That's true. There's a new magic set mm. on the horizon. <laughs> yes. There's this Baron Nasher figure on my desk. Mm. And that's it. That's all that happened. Okay. <laughs> that seems pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Emily, how about you? I am pretty good. Uh, Christmas and New Year's also happened to me. I know, like not not everybody gets to experience that, but it came came around to my neck of the woods this year, and it was pretty fun. Um, <clears throat> pretty busy, but in a good way. Good friends, good family time. Uh, yeah. I just recently started watching Twin Peaks again because I totally forgot that was a thing I was intending to watch before <laughs> the uh, series starts up again this year. And I'm in kind of the badlands of season two where David Lynch is not really a part of things. And so the writing kind of goes into disarray. But um, I look forward to seeing where the cards all fall because the show is going to be coming back and a lot of the original cast is on board too. So. Very cool. It's a good show. It's a classic. Very cool. But. When you said Twin Peaks, at first I thought you meant Peaky Blinders, and I was like, oh yeah. Mm. Twin so good, Peaky Blinders. That could are. be a good yeah. crossover. Uh, have, you, have you watched Peaky Blinders? I don't recall. I don't Me? Recall, yeah, I don't recall if I watched that yeah. alone or... No, we, we totally watched the first season together. Oh, I wait. haven't seen the second season. Oh, okay, so wait. You haven't seen the second Whoa, or there. third seasons? Uh, no, uh, Emily. Okay, and you haven't truly experienced Peaky Blinders. It's Does that good. mean I'm kicked out? Well, no. You're off the show. No. <laughs> okay. I should have known. <laughs> you should check it out. I know Everyone how much you guys talk watching, about it. Watching Peaky Blinders is required to even play Blades in the Dark at yeah. all. John Harper doesn't you know, actually even the like, send you the 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 thing unless uh, <laughs> unless uh, Peaky Blinders comes up on your watch again on Netflix. Mm. Yeah. So. I see. I'm an imposter. Yeah, I'm sorry. I guess so. <laughs> Ian, how about you? Uh, I got sick twice. Dude, That's nice. what that, yeah. But did Christmas oh. and New Year's happen? That's I, horrible. I, I recovered. That happened too, but yeah. like, the, the kind of, to encapsulate how it went, I got sick like two weeks after I got done being sick the first time, so um, just getting over that. Uh, but it did give me a lot of time to catch up on shows and stuff that I missed. Um, watched uh, Over the Garden Wall. Oh, yeah, I've heard that's really good. Awesome. Oh, it's so good. It it I can't even begin to explain how good it is without, like, going in-depth into how it's great, but it's just so good. Um, yeah, I don't even... It's like a very almost fairy tale esque um kind of comedy uh little like really neat uh animation style great voice actors um elijah wood oh, really? um yeah it's got elijah wood it's got uh, uh john cleese it's huh. got uh i can't i think of his name doc brown from back to the future oh uh doc brown is his name in real life too yeah 
Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> um, lots of people. Lots, lots of really cool actors and stuff. So, recommend wow. watching that. Um, also been playing a lot of The Binding of Isaac. As oh, yeah, the yeah. I thought like, you were playing Rebirth. Yeah, the... DLC for that, uh, the newest one, Afterbirth Plus, came out today. Um, it was like three hours after it was scheduled to come out, and basically I watched my Twitter explode with people just being like, when's it coming out and stuff. And it came out, I played it for 30 minutes until I had to go do other work, and it was fun, but um, I have like 500 hours in that game. Um, <laughs> it's Wait, probably... you said you played it for a few hours before work. <laughs> Before work, yes, but up up <laughs> until that point, I have had 500 hours in that game. So, uh, I see, okay, uh, I see. It's, yeah, top 10, that game. If you haven't played it, you should try it, because it's pretty cool. Cool, very cool. Um, well, thank you. Uh, Mike, anything that you've been up to? Let's see. Uh, mainly, I've been working, and I went and listened to the Giant Bombcasts Game of the Year podcasts that they did this last week. Cool. You've also That's been uh, streaming as well with the Encounter Roleplay crew doing some some work as uh, oh, yeah. um, one of their players in a, a couple of campaigns. You just started yeah. uh, this, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday, right? They, yeah. yeah you were yesterday on was a, the first session. Yeah, you were on a, like a Learn to Play D&D show. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's fun so far. I enjoy playing with that crew. Uh, there, there's some cool people there. Uh, Will's a super cool guy, and he's doing a decent job doing DMing for all of us, and I, I look forward to playing more. I have Mondays and Tuesdays off work, and... So you play role-playing games for those days? Play role-playing games. <laughs> uh, and when I uh, was inquiring about being on the Encounter Roleplay show, I had to double-check. It's like, alright, am I off at this time from my classes that I'm going to be taking? And sure enough, I get off, you know, before noon on Mondays from Great. all my classes and don't have anything the rest of the day so I'm going to be able to do that uh, awesome. for uh, an undetermined amount of time, I think. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how long I'll be on there, but I'm having a good time. And Game of the Year podcasts are fun, so you should go listen to those. Great, cool. Because video games are cool. As for myself, uh, I have been uh, playing a lot of uh, Magic the Gathering online. Because uh, between Anthony's birth, or not birthday, Christmas gift to me, and me deciding to just do it the rest of the way, I bought into Magic Online and have been playing that. It's a lot of fun. I've been streaming a little bit of it, so um, you might have caught a stream of that at some point. If you haven't, you can check it out. And if you don't know when I'm going to be doing that, I don't know either. But you can follow us on Twitter and figure out when I will be streaming it, because I always update our Twitter before we uh, go live with that. So I'll go ahead and put our Twitter in the uh, chat. So if you haven't followed that already, you can do that. Um, other than that, Christmas and New Year's also happened to me. I got to spend both of them with Emily, which was really nice. And um, I had Jello shooters at a New Year's Eve party for the first time ever. They are delicious. <laughs> and I had to restrain myself, which I don't often have to do with alcohol because I, I don't drink a whole lot. He said, with a reindeer uh, decorated uh -huh. reindeer next to him. Well, you're kind of a jello reindeer. fiend. Reindeer, come on. <laughs> I, I, am, I am a bit of a jello fiend. And oh my word, like, dude, those jello shooters, oh, so, like, I, mm, bring them to me. I Did love you those. Jello shootered? No, I actually didn't. I only had, like, I only had two of them. Um, I'm also an incredible lightweight, but, like, <laughs> I I didn't I didn't I didn't get any strange feelings. I just really liked the way they were. <laughs> so uh, in the future in the future I'm gonna learn how to make those so that I can enjoy jello shooters as well as a rain beer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so. Congratulations. You've been waiting all day for that, haven't yes. you? <laughs> no, I actually I actually so my mom did this, right? For Christmas. My parents, okay, for Christmas, they were, I don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Emily is kind of laughing. I ended up with two Star Wars-themed potato heads. I love Star Wars, but what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I, I have, I've, okay, so I literally was so excited because this year I finally got rid of a potato head I got. I got a Mr. Potato Head like two years ago for Christmas uh, that was like a Santa one, and I finally got rid of it in a white elephant gift exchange, which Ian got something from, which is pretty cool that he should show later as well. I was so excited that I got rid of it. And then Christmas morning, I get like, oh, uh, uh, Darth Tater and Luke, <laughs> yeah. Luke Frywalker. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so I have them in my closet where they will be until I find a way to get rid of them. Um, the trash. I love my family. They're great. Uh, you know, they, they love they love to play a prank on me. Uh, but yeah, uh, they also got me a six pack of of, of uh, Pelican Brewing's uh, Bad Santa series Cascadian Dark Ale. It's quite nice. And they uh, they put googly eyes in a nose and a pipe cleaner antler on it. It's impossible to drink with the antlers on. I was about to say. <laughs> but they're, they're quite easy to take off and enjoy. Speaking of Star Wars, though. So, what about it? Something. Can we take at least a second to mention Rogue One? We've just done it. <laughs> Ian, you've been waiting all day for this moment. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude. Yeah, Rogue One was was good. Emily and I have seen it twice now. And enjoyed it. I loved it. You still haven't seen it, Anthony? Nope. <sighs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back next Bye. week, uh, January <laughs> tenth at six thirty Pacific. Movie. Thanks for watching <laughs> and good night. Anthony's not one with the forest, and the forest is not with him. So I mean, are we going anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it, it'll swim away in its midichlorians, so... It's everything. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, actually, I'm more of a midichlorians kind of guy, but... <laughs> <laughs> here's here's my, my hot take on Star Wars. I have no problem with midichlorians. And with that being said, let's play... You also like Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. It's it's true. True. Moving it's on, true. moving on. That's the kind of guy he no. is. And he loves jello shooters. Hell yeah! <laughs> That's not actually kind of a complete picture right there. <laughs> that was like the kind of guy that would want to sell you death sticks, really, you know. Oh, uh, that's yeah. What, everybody's different, you know? <laughs> Sorry, my... my All right, everyone. <laughs> my, uh, my headphone cord got ran over by my chair, so I had to deal with that. I'm clumsy free, like Jar Jar, the best character in Star Wars. Ian, tell us about Blades in the Dark. <laughs> Please. You can't now. Cool. Just the inner monologue of my life, just just <laughs> trying to figure out what's gone wrong with it and what like <laughs> the path has diverged at this point, and just. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> Blades of the Dark. That's uh, the game we're playing. Right? Yeah. It has nothing to do with anything we just talked about. No. I think. Yeah. Blades Fortunately, yeah, yeah. Played Blades. For Blades one the could be yeah. a Blades in the Dark score. You know. Could. It would be a much Maybe. better yeah, Age okay. of Rebellion campaign. Well, <laughs> since Age of Rebellion is a Star Wars RPG... Yes, that's yes. the reason why. <laughs> Jokes. That's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, last time on Blades, we uh, we did downtime. That was what we did. Mm -hmm. Lots of cool stuff happened there. Talking with vampires and talking yes. about machines. Machine and talking to guys that make sword canes as well. That happened too. Mm -hmm. So, swords are stupid. A lot, a lot of, uh, well, I mean, he's gone now, so you don't have to keep this act up. <laughs> Look, Giuseppe was just a a reflection of how I really feel. <laughs> Italian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very, very accurate. Italian. Like, it's very no, accurate. I live like ten minutes away. You can film anytime you want. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> I can't. Uh, anyways, <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> yeah, this is everyone, and a Happy New Year. Anyways, uh, so now we're going to move on to scheming and 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 dealing out the scheming and stuff. So great. Um, I think what we'll go to is the point in time where you're all together where do you guys so this is a question i've had for a while where do you guys like meet up is it at the gambit or is it in the straight where's the set a point where we meet up and we talk about like our plans and stuff i assume it's the gambit since that's our main hideout yeah i think so okay i mean i think we, we enjoy a happy hour at a different bar on like thursdays but <laughs> it's tuesday <laughs> Okay, so I think what we'll do, yeah, <laughs> I think what we'll do, what we'll do is we'll cut to the gambit where the four of you are sitting around chatting, um, and I kind of want to know what's the scene that we, what do we come into? What are the characters doing now as we kind of close into the gambit? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I missed something. 
check chat. <laughs> oh, dude. Mike was trying to. Oh my god. So Fenris, hello Fenris, uh, good to see you. By the way, it was trying to uh, was trying to give an idea for a, a, a Blades in the Dark Star Wars crossover, saying lightsabers in the dark. Did. Yater then said, "Come in villainy." <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and, and before he could notice it, he just like looked, and there was this moment where like his face was like, <laughs> "It's so good." Oh god! <laughs> okay. Wow. Oh man. I apologize to all of our viewers at home. I will never be on the show again. Thank you for your support. Uh, Join us next week for our first. Series <laughs> come and villainy. Come and villainy. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, okay. Adult <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars role playing. It's not that kind of role playing though. No. Is the oh, it's just got a whole new meaning. In the Star Wars universe. All right, all right. <laughs> so how's things in, in Duskfall? Where there, are, uh, where there is not. I don't know what Mike point, has said. I'm kind of lost at this point, but uh, you're breaking my immersion, yeah. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Mike, look, you're really wrecking my concentration as the GM. I really I'll, find you disruptive as Miss Creep. I'll so. leave now. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the oh, gambit. Yeah, the three of you are now sitting at the gambit. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. So the group, I think it's it's the the meetup, right? This is the time where you guys have set aside to plan your next engagement um and uh and so i kind of want to know what like what do we see as we get in like are is there like is it maps is it like you know notes what are we seeing as we kind of come into the scene so i think that um oscar probably has laid out on the table um like, like everyone everyone else uh probably i don't know if you feel crowded or or something but like oscar's stuff is taking up the whole table He's got his, like, bag there, and he's got, like, a couple different folders with papers, and he's, like, handing out papers and being... He's telling you guys to look at them uh, and, and check out uh, all these different locations, different people of interest, um, just all sorts of different, like, cold cases that exist or um, leads that existed for cases that he did in the past that uh, maybe would now serve as, like, a good place to, to do something new or expand our operations. Okay, I think that uh, Weaver would probably be very interested and attentive to uh, to anything like that. So he's he's doing his best to to pay attention to your lead on that, letting you take the floor, but paying attention. What about lyric and Krisa? Um, I, I imagine that, are, so are we sitting at the bar or around a table around or, a table. okay, that's, that's kind of what I was envisioning. I, I imagine that Lyric would be sitting back in a chair with, um, her heel kind of propped up on the table. So like ultra Lyric casual, um, but, but she's, she's thumbing through some, some papers and, um, and she's listening as well. I mean, how interesting are the papers? <laughs> oh, I mean, that totally depends on you. A lot of them are, are, or depends on you. A lot of them probably are more interesting based on what's there. They're all just, like, uh, <clears throat> pictures of buildings or people and, like, descriptions of the location. It's really just, like, I, I like notes after Oscar has cased a joint or, like... Um, so it's detective work, yes. not research. It's a little bit of both, you know. Like it's. Well, I'm not research. saying that there's a that there's no difference between them, sure. but it is, it's definitely uh, it's more about on, yeah, it's detective. people and places rather than things. Yeah. Okay. Well, what cases? Oh, sorry, Krisa is playing with rats. <laughs> <laughs> so or looking like he's not playing with his rats, but he is. Sure, he's like <laughs> under the table, like. Yeah, he's like. Well, like in his coat, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Oscar is looking through him, and he's just—he's not really paying attention to any of you. His glasses are down, and he's just like, "All right." And then there's this one, and this one's a little bit strange. The uh, the lamp blacks used to own this one, but then the red sashes took it over. And then there's these other guys, the crows, and they took it over as well. Another time, I don't know who owns it now, but it kind of is a hot spot for gang activity. And 
he kind of like thumbs through and he looks up and sees Krisa and he's like, and uh, Krisa, this one might be interesting to you. It's a chemicals warehouse. I don't know what they've got in there, but it might be used to something. It used to be a coal warehouse and then the lamp blacks took it over and then the red sashes took it over and then after them, the crows and then after the crows, the lamp blacks again and then it was a chemicals factory. They probably got a lot of smells. It's, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. And, uh, Lyric, this one, uh, this one's a dock house. It's not very large, but it's got some stuff there. Might be interesting to check out. And Weaver, yeah. this one's got cane swords. It's stupid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, uh, he, doesn't give I mean, any, he doesn't give anything to Weaver that's specifically like, this might be interesting to you, because I don't think Oscar knows what would be interesting to Weaver. I think that uh, uh, Weaver, he would ask, uh, you got anything on specific people that we might be able to to get in contact with to grow our network mm. do you mean foes or allies i'm looking for allies specifically okay well allies are harder to come by than than foes in this city uh i've got some files in my office who are you looking for or what looking for looking for someone that we might be able to go through to to sell any of our Goods that we come by mm. by shady means. Ah, so you're looking for either a, a black market merchant or someone with some fine mm. taste that maybe can't get them otherwise? Mm -hmm. I may know of a man. There's one in, uh, well, he used to live in Brightstone, but he went bankrupt. Uh, he was a collector of fine arts. Uh, as it turns out, his fine arts were... Uh, demonically possessed uh, from Tychoros. Uh It's kind of a strange one, but I don't know, maybe he's still around. He uh, he moved to Charholo. After he got bankrupt, he found an apartment there and he's been holed up. That's I heard. And that was, I don't know, two years ago. So he may or may not be there. He might be willing to buy some stuff if we can get the right people to give some Tychorosi artwork. Might be worth looking into. Aye. What about the rest of you? What do you say? Anything else pique your interest? Anybody? I can go look in my office. Are the rats interesting enough? They sure <laughs> smell bad, Krisa. I can't tell if Anthony's frozen or not, or if he's really good at holding that face. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I think he's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> well, boys, it seems that we need to... Uh, he, he looks up and sees Lyric and is like, sorry. Uh, well, folks, it seems like we, uh, we might want to uh, consider expanding what we've got here. We've got a cafe, we've got a, a bar and a restaurant together. Although, admittedly, the restaurant's kind of shite. We should talk about the cook later. Uh, maybe what cases can handle that while he's on his off time. Uh, perhaps we should uh, find something that helps us with our smuggling. Something that'll uh, either keep our, our port at the, at the straight safe or something that'll uh, keep traffic going through it. Perhaps we need to go on an ad campaign. I don't know, Silas was better at this than I am. What do you guys say? I say now's as good a time as any. For which one? <laughs> Whatever you want. Lyric is kind of, she's kind of been distracted, still kind of mulling over the Skurlock situation, and she doesn't necessarily want that to be what she brings to the table, so she's being super accommodating. <laughs> sure, I think, I think Oscar actually gets a little bit upset. Um, and, and he he looks at you and when because he's like trying to like bring up an idea and like Weaver was like yeah maybe we should do this and he brought it up to you guys because frankly he cares more about your guys' opinions right now because again he just doesn't know Weaver as well and he looks at Lyric and says Lyric ever since I've been back you've been gone you've been here but gone something's not right in your head are you with us or are you somewhere else is there something you need to attend to oh I've I've attended to a thing or two trust me I'm. I'm trying to get back into this. Well, don't worry about it. All right. Don't worry about me. All right. Perhaps it's just my own self 
looking into this a bit much. Yeah. It's good to be back and working with you. Both of you. It's good to have you uh, back. And when he says both of you, he, he means just you, Lyric, even though he was looking at Anthony and thinking about the cases. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take and, it uh, all. I gotta go. Thanks, guys. See ya. Okay. <laughs> Should I wear, like, a hat to remind you of Wakasis? Uh, <laughs> Dude, I don't know. You just look so much like Wakasis. Yeah. It's uncanny. It's... <laughs> also, I'm bad. It's stunning. And, well, from a, from a player's, from a player level, what Weaver would be suggesting would be what would be equivalent to taking the, either the luxury fence or possibly the covert drop, uh, yeah, like, turf so let's, or claims. Let's talk, yeah, let's talk That's kind of what, what we're thinking. kind of doing here as, as, uh, that stuff. So, um, so what you guys are talking about right now was kind of we kind of discussed it earlier in the Skype, very briefly, I should say. It was very one-sided from my point, but uh, <laughs> it is the turf, um, and or or to be more effect, the claims part of the uh, the crew sheet. So, if you want to open up the shadows crew that's under the hand playbook handouts, um, you'll see kind of these bunch of boxes underneath haunt, wanted level and heat. Um, and these are kind of like buildings and locations around Dustfall that you can gain access to that will allow you to do extra things. So, for instance, the straight is actually turf. Um, so while it doesn't hold many mechanical, like, doesn't change a lot of things in the mechanics, what it does is it allows it so it makes... Uh, leveling up our crew, so gaining rep, uh, it, it kind of makes it, like, it lowers the threshold that you need to level up. Um, so having uh, turf <coughs> makes it so we need, I believe, eight rep to level up, um, because the ninth is always filled based off that turf. Um, so, so if you reason, go to the that... it's good to get turf is that it makes it easier for our crew to level up? Yeah, it Correct. makes it a lot faster for um, your rep. So basically, in order to, you know, level up rep, um, you have to... And this is actually something that that John has just, like... He's been working on uh, version 8 of the Blades, like, mechanics. And uh, from what I understand, and I'm not 100% sure, this is kind of the final uh, version that will be being printed in, I believe, February was what it was talking about. But... Uh, um, and so, actually, uh, the kind of advancement for your crew has changed a bit. So, um, normally, what it works is uh, you need rep, and then you need to actually gain a hold of, like, you're kind of like, it's kind of like, is your crew doing well or is it not? So, right now, our crew, because we advanced our rep track once, we gained uh, from weak to firm hold. Um, and so... Basically, every time you advance, you go down. So it's kind of this push and pull effect that in order for us to get up to tier one, where you're tier zero right now. So in order to get up to tier one, we actually have to get a strong hold. Mm. Um, so there's going to be some changes to that in the future. Um, we'll deal with that when it comes, but that's where turf is. Um, the other claims all do different things if you're looking at. So like, uh, for instance, covert drops. Um, you, every time you complete an espionage or sabotage uh, like operation, you gain an extra two coin. So does that for, count as a turf as well, or is that just like is that no, specialized no. turf? Or oh, okay, no, the ones that right now. So I believe you can only have up to three turf. Oh, okay, um, okay, I understand. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So kind of right now, what you guys have available to you, you'll see like a pathway leading from the layer to each of these squares. Um, and then pathways up across from those squares. Mm -hmm. um, so right now you basically have access to anything that is leading away from the layer or that turf that you own, which is to the right of the layer. Okay. Um, so any of those claims you have access to without any extra work. To be fair, though, you can go for, say you wanted to take another turf, um, which you can't, you technically don't have access to now. You just have to put in a little, maybe like an information gatherer or some extra work to gain access to that. And then it would switch to the score, which gaining a claim works the same way as a normal score works. Okay. Except for at the end, the reward is that you gain the claim. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> help me understand what, what a luxury fence is. Yeah, I was curious 
curious about that too. So I tried to Google it, and it just showed me pictures of really fancy gates. Yeah. <laughs> so mm. fence. a fence is someone who will. It's like a middleman for selling stolen goods. So a thief mm. will sell to a fence, and then a fence will find a buyer, usually after finding a way to clean the product or launder the product so that it's not traceable back to the thief. Mike, how do you know that? <laughs> it's like, you know, <laughs> watch my collar and steal. Cool. I guess. <laughs> okay, well, now that I understand what you, what that means and, and what you were talking about there, I think that after that conversation happens with uh, Lyric and just sort of talking about you know, is she is she all there? Is she making sure that she's still <laughs> committed to what we're trying to do here? Um, Oscar keeps thumbing through his files and he says, Weaver, uh, give me one second. Let me go check my office. I think I've got someone you might be looking for. Uh, you're looking for someone who can sell something, right? Something that we get? You're mm -hmm, not necessarily mm -hmm. looking for us to get something. I must have misunderstood you. All right. Correct. Yes. I think Correct. I might... I might know a guy or two. Uh, whether or not they're still in the business is uh, is a mystery to me. It's been a while since I've dealt with their kind, but it's always worth a shot. Give me one minute. And he grabs his cane and, and uh, kind of walks into the other room for a second. Do you guys do anything while I'm gone, or may I come back? Yeah, while you're gone, I think uh, Weaver's sitting next to Creesa. And maybe there's like some bread or crackers on the table or something. And Weaver like takes one and breaks off a little piece and like puts his hand out like towards one of Kreese's rats. Trying to like Kreese, offer it food. Kreese, uh bends down and eats the bread out of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. My hand kind of stays there for a second. <laughs> and he just shrugs and puts his hand like back on the table, like pull it in front of him, like Thanks. tapping his fingers on the table. Lyric just puts her her face in her hands. Just <laughs> she can't watch. She can't watch this shit. She's seen too much. <laughs> so, uh, so Oscar comes caning back into the room, um, and he he says. Here's two files. I'm not sure which one will be the best bet here. Again, the last time I spoke to either of these was years ago. Um, but these these two, uh, they might be worth something. One of them, uh, <clears throat> one of them, someone else is going to have to visit ever since uh, I, well, I suppose I should explain a bit. When I took off, you you remember that, right? When I took off for a bit, Derek. Um, no, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I would be I, the one to remember. Uh, he, he looks at Kreesa after you say no, and he's like, I was here for a while ago, but then I uh, I took a quick break. Um, it didn't end up being so quick, but uh, <clears throat> I'm back now, so that's what matters, right? Uh, Lyric, that's what matters. Of course. <laughs> All right, good. Um, uh, anyway, sorry. Um, so uh, he... Uh, he would sell things over there at, uh, at Ojak's Market, and uh, I'm not allowed back there anymore, but uh, uh, this one, I'm sure he's working still. Uh, w when you have a job like that, you don't really quit it. Um, the other one, he was just a, a small-time uh, seller of uh, cheap second-hand uh, uh, fishing goods. Uh, it's not much, but it's something. He might be able to... Yeah get us a, a hand over there near the docks, or get our product on one of the larger ships. Uh, either way, um, I don't know if they're still working, but I suspect the one with the Ojax market is still working. He'll probably reach for the first file that you that you had and the one with thumb through it. Ojax? Yeah. Cool. What do you Comes through it for a little bit. And Ian's gonna have to tell you what's on it because I don't know. <laughs> I can only I can only make up so much. I'm looking for Ojak's Market and trying to figure out where it is uh, exactly. Ojak's Was it in? Yeah, I can tell you. Uh, Ojak's Market oh. is in, Silkshore. Um, that's right. Okay. Yeah, it's in it's in Silkshore, um, and okay. it's it's just sort of the night market that takes place. That's illegal and nice place. Nice place. Yeah, it it, yeah. it is. It, it's full of like. It's, it's full of weird stuff. Like, it depends on which end of the market you're at. When they set up, and they set up in different places all the time, but, like, the north end is always the nice stuff, and, like, the luxury goods, the 
the gambling the dens. Uh, the uh, well, yeah, the cum is up top. The villainy is uh, in the south end. Um, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's like there. There is a bunch of stuff for like cult people um, as well. So yeah, and, and that stuff is definitely on on one end of the market. Um, because that way the market can still appeal to the people of Brightstone who would care to enjoy some niceties under the radar. Yeah. And Silkshore, for those who don't know, is... And I'm looking at the actual description of it. Uh, it's the Red Lamp District. Hell yeah. So uh, it's the it's a good place yes. to... Come and villainy. Indul- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's and that's art. like. Yeah, as as like it, it like a brief picture of of uh, some sort of pops up like it the name pops up like Borderlands style and then underneath it just says "Come and Villainy." Right yes, <laughs> yes, Perfect. I can see it now. <laughs> All right, we have an episode name for this on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, there so go. Get flagged, gets flagged, you know, yeah. inappropriate content. We're yeah. gonna disappoint a lot of people. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> yeah. So. so Give me a real brief out out of you know character description of the two people that you were talking about, okay, so sure. I can like kind of yeah. So I I was just making it up. Uh, th- these people don't exist prior to this, but uh, yeah. So if you want to make any changes, I'm in no way offended. Uh, one of them is just a guy who uh, he used to work on on the boats, like the Leviathan hunting ships, but he uh, he sustained injury enough that he doesn't have his sea legs because he only has one leg. Um, and so he, uh, he, like, he, he, yeah, he, he uses his connections within the, um, the ranks of the, the Leviathan hunters to attain goods that are cheaper than normal. And he does so by buying the stuff that thieves have stolen off of other, like people who would go there during the night shifts. And like, there's a, a group of people I'm sure who would use some sort of underwater, um, technique to rip pieces from ships and, you know, okay. So okay. he, he buys from them and then sells it back to the ship owners. Um, yeah. And then the other one, um, he's literally, I mean, like I said, he's just a guy. Um, he might be from um, from another place, like in another one of the islands. Um, uh, which one is uh, Weaver from? He's from... Aruvia? Aruvia, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it's this, called. So this guy's an Aruvian, and uh, he he uses his uh, exotic look because he's not from the same place, like he has a different ethnicity, um, to uh, market like uh, ethnic things, like, you know, rarities from all over the world. Um, and he, he buys things from uh, people who are uh, here in Dunwall, um, that, uh, like secondhand stuff that isn't worth anything. And then he sells it back to those same or different people who see the same value in things that are worthless. Um, little trinkets and things like that that look really nice but actually don't do anything. He might also pretend to be involved in some witchcraft stuff if you give him a couple extra coin. Okay. Like enchanted things, you know. Cool. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So now basically, so what I'm, what I'm hearing from you guys, right, is that you want to go for the what was it? Uh, luxury fence. Luxury fence, yes. Okay. Um, Works for me, unless someone wants to do something else, because I, I can pull up more files on more people. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a suggestion from my part, not a order that that's what we have to do. You know, I, I mean, I, I like to melt sundown. I like the idea. I like yeah, the extra so like, coin for burglary and robbery. <laughs> yeah, so that's it's it's a good upgrade if you plan on doing scores that involve robbing people mm-hmm. of items. And so, if that's the idea, then it's perfect for that. Um, so. If, I mean, is that what everyone wants? Is that, you know? We can always that's go to one question. one later on. So. Yeah, and that's, like, with the smuggling stuff, I don't know what that would technically fall under if we do a score like that. Well, part of the whole <laughs> thing when we set up the straight was that we'd be secretly taking some of the stuff that they'd be leaving there in our safe. So that that's burglary. <laughs> and then we could go sell it to this guy. So we're doing it. Yeah, doing sense. Doing the villainy. Okay, so you got two options. Um, I'm gonna have to narrow it down to one because obviously, uh, I think I'll go with the Silk Shore guy since we've talked about it a bit. Although I'm, I'm, I'm tucking that little other guy in the the back of my brain because I like the idea. Um, so, <laughs> so we're going to 
go with the guy in Silkshore. Um, and and so here's the thing: how nor like so, how getting a claim works is you say which one you want, um, and I have to tell you which crew owns it. Um, mm. So the idea is that every bit of Duskwall is owned by somebody. Um, as a new crew, you kind of have to deal with the fact that you're new and that everyone else owns everything else. So, um, unfortunately, this guy that you knew is now under the careful watch of a crew. Um, so, let me yeah, real he, quick... He, he probably got hired out by somebody. Yeah, no, and it's like, it's one of the situations, I can tell you now, where he doesn't... It's much like what's going to happen when you... Uh, have him working for you uh, is basically there's not a whole lot of choice, but we'll see. Um, it's he right now he's been currently uh, pulled into the service of a gang. Let me pull up my gangs. I'm trying to think of which I think which page is that on. I have it on the it's on the it's on the handouts too. The faction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is the is the Silkshore merchant the ex Leviathan hunter guy or the Aruvian guy? Uh, it's the ex Leviathan hunter. No, no, no. It's the Wait, Aruvian it, guy. It is the Aruvian guy. Yeah, the the Silkshore guy is the guy at the market. The the Leviathan okay. hunter is a different guy. Oh, oh okay, okay. Well, fuck me. We're doing the Leviathan hunter guy because I got mixed up. <laughs> oh no. I'm fine with either. And so. a friend, maybe. Don't I'll come in villainy for this episode. The blades in the dark. Yeah, so um, this guy, he's actually right now uh, at the where the fuck, at the docks, uh, <laughs> where obviously it makes sense for him to be, um, and it's actually a perfect location for you guys to control because Crowsfoot is next to the docks, mm -hmm. so it kind of synergizes really well with the operation you have going for you. However, he's been pulled into the surfeit the uh, service <laughs> of where are they? Not Leviathan Hunters, you guys would get wrecked by them. <laughs> I would what are you, get wrecked what are you by you saying? <laughs> I'm saying that a tier 4 gang would fuck you up. <laughs> I mean, if you want, Not no. Uh, nah, so they are actually... he. Yeah, so this guy's in the service of a gang you've encountered before. Um, in fact, it's bad luck on their part and yours that he they're now... Uh, the second turf that you're going to be stealing from them, uh, which is the Foghounds. Yay! Wow, those uh... guys are getting shit on. Yeah. They basically, within the last time we saw them, systematically, their luck has gotten even worse, and they're 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 getting closer to their patron, but also that they've been looking for to kind of, like, give them money to steal things from people. And, uh, same point in time, thieves stealing money from people don't, you know, end up very well, so, uh, now, so now that I've told you about that, I should also preface that, uh, stealing claims is really, really bad. Um. No, it's good. You're, uh, yeah, it's good for you, but it's bad for other people, so, unfortunately, if you do attempt this, it's gonna be, uh, Probably a negative two to their rep, which will put you at war with them. Um, How many of them are there left? Because I imagine there can't be too many. They're still tier one, so they're probably... I'm trying to remember. There's probably like, you know, 11 or 12 of them left. Um, roughly, still, they outnumber you still, but um, I mean, you're players, so you've got a bit of an advantage. So I tell so I tell the crew when someone speaks up and says maybe we should investigate the, the Leviathan hunter and I say uh, last I heard from him he was getting attention from the fog hounds you remember them don't you Galeric uh, they're the ones who uh, we took the straight from real gobshites oh, they are yeah <laughs> well, <clears throat> they're all already got to be pissed at us right we took their croissants <laughs> That we did. All right, so uh, perhaps uh, it's not so bad to make an enemy a worse enemy instead of making an enemy a new. Uh, what did I see? I think about that. I like it. 
So they have more croissants? Perhaps. I am. I'm not sure. I'm it's on board. Possible. <laughs> Better to put all our <laughs> eggs in one basket, I guess. Whatever they got, the rats are going to love sticking around near the docks. There's plenty of old barrels that aren't sealed. Don't encourage him, for the love <laughs> of God. <laughs> it's I, I kind of look at Lyric. It's important to keep everybody on the same page. <laughs> everybody here has some value. <laughs> All right, then. How do we want to approach this man? I think that uh, we should send at least one of us uh, should be <clears throat> in the periphery of this meeting uh, so that if anything goes wrong, they can be a surprise <laughs> and also be some sort of a lookout for any unwanted company. That's a good idea, Weaver. Have you got a good shot? Am I a good shot? Or That's what I'm saying. I, what? Have you got a good shot? What the fuck do you mean? Is I, that... Come on now. <laughs> Have you got a good shot? He then? just kind of... Well, he just lifts up his hands and a, do you see any ranged weapons on me at all? And you totally don't. He doesn't have any ranged weapons at all. Have you got a good shot? <clears throat> I suppose he'll just like roll his eyes. What and the fuck is just he not pull out his dagger and throw it into the wall, or something like that. That's pretty cute, but have you got a good shot? <laughs> <laughs> he just puts his hand in his head. I don't shoot guns. The fuck not? Why? Swords. I don't need them. <laughs> He's Batman. <laughs> yeah, I only punch. <laughs> All right then, Weaver. Perhaps you should stand with us and not be on the periphery. Krisa, have you got a good shot? You want a it's shot? Me. He pulls out like a vial. <laughs> he says, Krisa, I'm always in the for a shot. <laughs> yeah, I can I, I disagree far. with you on that one, Oscar. I think I think that I'm the best man for the job. Well, Weaver, you're, you're new here, and here's what I want. I want you to be standing with us. If the shit goes down, I want you and your knives to be right there with us. I don't want you standing in the background. I don't know you enough. That's the simple truth of it. I trust these guys to stand behind me, but I don't trust you. Not yet. Not that much. After this job, perhaps, but I trust the Leic with, like with my life. Not the, not the rest of you. Not yet. It's no offense to you. You understand, right? You can't even answer a question. Have you got a good shot? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, mate. <laughs> he like goes slaps and, you on the side he of the goes head. And gets his dagger. <laughs> <from the> wall. <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah. Like, oh, pretty good there. <laughs> <clears throat> Krisa, your cane out from under. Krisa and, and yes, and Weaver, perhaps. Uh, well, Krisa, do you have any means of, of helping us out from afar? Do you have any means of giving us something that we can hear you from afar with? Perhaps a potion that'll increase our hearing. You can. I can just make a, a loud scout. noise. Well, that's close, but. <laughs> Lyric, how about you? Have you got a good shot? <laughs> Oh, I've got a fucking good shot. <laughs> All right, then. Perhaps the lyric should be in the back, and three of us can be up front. But, Chris, maybe you put a hood up on. I put a hood up where? On your head. Put a hood up on there. All right. You know. Before we go further, this is the point where we have to start talking about planning for yeah, scores. Yeah. It's, uh, yes. So what it is is it's a normal score, um, so you can think about your attack. Uh, however, there's a few things. We'll be using the new engagement rules that John has posted. Okay. Um they are cool. I like them. <laughs> nice. Um, it allows it allows for some interesting stuff to happen. So uh, prior to what happened, what what used to happen is the dice would be determined by uh, by like basically how much how well I thought the people you'd be going up against were. Um, yeah, be determined were by like the, their tier for the, time, for the kind of our attack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the plan of the attack. However, now it's a little different. Um, okay. So, how it works, um, it's going to be a fortune roll, so just kind of like a normal roll, uh, except you'll be rolling uh, the tier of your crew, um, and then you get modifiers based off of uh, a couple things. Um, one is uh, you get a plus one dice if the plan of a, the attack is at their weakness. Um, so, the example that they use is uh, the billhooks, which are like a violent crew, um, 
are strong against attack, like a full-out blown attack, right? Like an assault plan. Um, however, if you use a social plan where you try to trick them, you'll be getting plus one dice because while they're strong and deadly, they're not particularly okay. smart and huh. pro. They're very prone so, to deception. So how do I tell? Like, how do we tell what their weakness is? Um, or do I'll tell you that. Like, Okay, I didn't know if that was like a gather information thing, or do we just have to get? Let's uh, guess we'll it tie or... it in. I'll tie it into the gather information sure, role sure. that we'll do. Um, the other one um, is is uh, based off of the defenses that I deem that they have at this place. So, like the same example, um, if your plan was to just break in the front door of the Bill Hooks base, you get negative one die because their base is defended. Mm -hmm. However, um, if you, you know, the example that they give is if you get them drunk before you go to, pl like, fight them, then you'll get a, like, you know, vulnerable, you make them vulnerable, stuff like that. Mm. Um, so, uh, I'm not 100% sure on these rules. We'll kind of hope to have them down to pat by the next time we play, sure, especially sure. since maybe we'll be getting version 8 uh, fully oh, wow. okay. uh, eventually. Um, well, I, I'm that I don't know we'll, okay. when we get it, but we'll we'll figure it out by then. Um, so what we're going to be doing right now is uh, kind of you guys decide which your plan of attack you want to go for. Someone can do a gather information roll, and then we'll use those rules that I just explained to do it. And I'll kind of be leading that. So um, right so we, now, you so we don't get to know their weakness just off the bat. Uh, when you do the gather information, I'll tell you okay, something cool. that is coinciding with the plan that you pick. I would suggest. Um, I will. They are thieves. They're thieves. So anything that you think they would be weak to, you'll want to go with that. Um, Extortion. Scissors. Scissors, Scissors is pretty good. Emily, any idea? Decapitation. Um. Uh, I don't know. I I kind of think extortion. Hmm. Shoot. Does Weaver know that uh, the Gambit has fought these guys in the past? Was he there for that? There? No, yeah. We, yeah. We, well, right. Oh, yeah, Weaver was there. Yeah. 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 So, so when, I believe when the straight was taken, uh, there was no bandits at that time, but when they ambushed the boats and the fog cans retaliated, you were totally there. Okay. Weaver would then suggest. Uh, he'd say, so we've already dealt with these guys in the past. We know that they've been weakened by their interactions with us previously. It might be worth just trying to finish them off. You just want to run in there and fight them, do you? It's an idea. It is an idea. What does I think about it's not that? Many, there's not that many of them left. Aye. I bet Carissa could make quite a good bomb. Uh... Uh, or a few. What a few? But without that big crazy fucker, I don't know. <laughs> Is he around? Hey. I All right, now. I don't think so. No. None of you are that big <laughs> or that crazy. No, that's you're correct. Well, the math doesn't add up. Perhaps what we need is a bomb that we can throw, Grisa. Maybe not one we walk in with. A throwing bomb? I. Like that a way, cannon? That way, none of us have to be <laughs> crazy or big. Mechanical advantage. <laughs> what about if we staged something? What about if we... Police? Mm, no. What about if we staged something Levers. wherein... Well... <clears throat> what about if we staged something wherein uh, one of us gets kidnapped and uh, gets held for ransom and we can create some sort of uh, situation wherein... The one in the inside is the one doing the the real damage. It's sort of a reverse distraction. We gussy one of y'all up, make you look real nice, and walk you in front of their base a couple times. They'll come over there and, and probably mug you, or at least do something like that to you and try to sell you off for a ransom. It's an idea. I am the prettiest one, but I can't hold very many bombs. That's true, that's true. You've got a very good point there, Krisa. You are quite attractive. This, at this point, I have to mention, Anthony, you can hold six bombs, so... Oh, damn. <laughs> Ooh! You have grenades and bandoliers, so... <laughs> nice. 
Very nice. Mustn't forget. Weaver would volunteer for that job. Weaver's into it. Okay. <laughs> he he will volunteer to be the man on the inside who fucks everyone up. All right, so who's going to be the informant who lets him know, points it out to him? It's got to be someone around here who hasn't been here for the, the job, so I think, Carissa, maybe you'll be the man. All you have to do is go in there and, and point out this uh, this lousy-looking brightstone motherfucker walking in front of their house. I'm sure they'll get the hint. All right. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. All right. You can make the bombs, too. I'm sure we'll need them. Maybe you can scout it out then while you're there. You can figure out maybe if they got any uh, anything we can fuck up and uh, maybe get a nice uh, two for one. I can do that. All right. And where do All you right. want me? Eric, I want you to. Well, well, have you got a good shot? I've got a good <laughs> Just kidding, shot. I'm kidding. Eric, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that for us it's a it's a matter of being the ones who are going to go and pay the ransom. So uh, I think we, we've got to be armed, the, armed to the teeth, and perhaps uh, I'll be the old man, the father of the man who's been kidnapped, and come and try to pay the ransom, and you'll just be my my strapping bodyguard. I can handle that. I'm sure you can. That okay. way they won't be they won't be surprised if you're armed to the teeth. <laughs> They'll know better. Oh well, yes. <laughs> and this has been planning with Matt Dennis. <laughs> Yeah. So, tell me, what plan exactly is this? That it's we're a doing? fucking deception it's, to me. It's a, it's a, a faux kidnapping plan. slash bombing. Okay. Sounds like deception <laughs> and then... might lead into an assault. We're stealing. You know, yeah, I think it's, it's, like it's, a, it's a deception. Out. It's a deception plan. Because yeah. the, okay. the goal is that Weaver will be able to like plant some bombs in there while he's kidnapped. Like, they'll they'll kidnap him and like he'll be able to have at least figured out some way to fuck him up from the inside and then the rest of us okay. can be there to give a ransom while he starts the process and and Krisa will have a good opportunity then excuse me to to help out with that process by scouting it out and giving weaver the best shot is okay. this a straight up deception plan or is it a linked plan with a deception plan assisting an assault plan um is the goal to, say... to distract or to kill people yes I'm going to say it's a okay. deception plan, just normal deception plan to kind of simplify it right now. Um, so your plan is to... It's to bait the hook and then switch it. So so you're, you're planning on essentially throwing, like pretending to throw out like Weaver as like a member of the Gambit. Uh, no, um, so, well, not even as a member of the Gambit, but as just a fancy rich guy. We'll, we'll cover okay. him in a bunch of like a bunch of shit that we've got lying around that's like all of our best shit we'll we'll go raid with cases his closet you know and then uh, okay. and, and then we'll have Kreesa point out that like you know there's a fancy guy walking around here and it's not Brightstone and these thieves the Foghounds will look at that and say ah an enticing target so it is worth noting that Weaver by default wears fairly fancy clothes most of the time Check your privilege, Weaver. Yes. It's also, I also should point out, it has to involve the fence. So might I, might my thing be to pretend to have him go to pawn off the jewelry to the fence and then use that as a distract, like, as the way method to then get in? Better yet, we convince the fence. Yeah, because. We, we convince the fence that in order to get out of his dealings with the Foghounds, he has to follow our plan, and he will get kidnapped by them as uh, a fancy okay. man. And then we will well, rescue no, if, him. If, if the fence is but you we're know, under the employment of the Foghounds as it is, then they're going to protect their fence, and if someone else tries to get in on that and use their fence, they're going to be protective of that, especially in their current state of uh, oh, sure. trying to establish themselves, you know? Yeah, Carissa could could drop a line about how we saw Weaver uh, messing with, or talking with some some guy at the docks. Okay, you know, I could like just that. go talk to him. Just straight up go try to do do a deal with the fence. Yeah, you I could. assume the Foghounds would just show up. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay, no I think we can do it. That would be right. like a trap. Yeah. You know, for okay. a classic ambush. <laughs> All right, so to make sure I have understood it, because I'm not fully sure if I have, but 
what I'm understanding is your plan is to send Weaver, dressed as a fancy Richmond, to try and sell uh, the goods to the fence as a cover for deceiving him into, like, essentially getting his trust uh, and lure the Foghounds into there to then dispatch them and gain control of the fence. Via the method of, ex of explosion, like, grenades and lyric well, is what I understand. Just murder. <laughs> general yeah. murder. Part of it, you know. part, the, the, the part about getting the fence is, is all about making sure that the, their current employer is no longer available to employ them, which is why the bombs are important. <laughs> A man with no hands cannot dish out coin. <clears throat> I, I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so... You're not going to kill all the foghounds. I'm going to tell you that right now. They're going to go to negative three with you. They're going to be at war with you afterwards. Then you'll have to kill all of them eventually. Um, but this will deal enough of a blow to then weaken them to do that. Um, okay. so that, that, that is totally in line with that. Um, so I believe it was, uh, Krisa who's, uh, who, who was it that was going to do that? I, I thought I heard Krisa doing the gather information was what I thought. Yeah, it sounds that like is. it. Okay. I could okay. also suggest that since I will be talking to the fence, that me and Krisa could do it as kind of a group action, because Weaver, while he's putting on this charade, would definitely be, you know, looking around and trying to get as much, you know, visual information as possible. Hmm. Okay. I mean, that, I, that is that. Does that sound good? Is that like a? Do you guys like that? Yep, makes sense. Okay. So. We are going to do that gather information roll. And I should say that like, this is not something that uh, is necessarily happening in sync with the operation. I mean, do you want to happen in sync with the operation or do you want it to be like a before the operation you set these in them in as like like to kind of review I think it? We, we would have done it before the operation. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so I think we'll we'll kind of zoom in on Krisa and Weaver as they approach the uh, the fence um, and the fence is on in the docks. Um, uh, it, the docks, you know, smell like fish. Normal dock kind of stuff. The, all these houses built on to them, um, and so the fence is actually it's it's like a, a building. Like I'm, what I'm thinking, and I it's very not very descriptive because it's based off of something. But do you guys know in, in, like the shops in Assassin's Creed Two? No. Yes. They're like it's like a house, but in the front of the house, there's like a cutout, like you know, like a, like a rectangle, like like you cut off like part of the wall, and then the shop is literally the house with the little like okay. uh, canopy over the front. Yeah, sure. um, and so yeah, so basically this fence is just in this house, uh, this two story house, and the but underneath it is like the shop where he kind of deals with his uh, lucrative goods. Um, so what you're going to be doing is you're trying to find a way to. Uh, get into contact with him and uh, the Foghounds? Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah? Well, the Foghounds so, yeah. by proxy, right? Like, I think Kreese Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. One question I would have uh, is, since it would be impossible for us to completely kill the Foghounds during this score, what is it that it would take to fully wipe them out, you know, in the future after we get this completed? I don't know if I can tell you that right now. <laughs> sure. um, I've only prepared for this score. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the situation afterwards. Um, but I will say they're tier one, so it won't be. It's not impossible, and it's a doable thing that you'd know right now. Um, dealing with them. Um, so I think we'll we'll cut to you guys at the place. Uh, the person in contact you were with is his name is Meyer. Uh, gosh, what was his last name? Meyer Com Comber, or Comer. We'll, we'll call him Comer. M-Y-R-E-C-O-M-B-E-R. -E Meyer Comer. Um, was he the one you said had one leg, Matt? Yep. I, yep. Okay, so still one more than Nogs. Uh, yep. <laughs> um, so... Less than Dennis Burger. 
So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, we cut to this. He's kind of like a very tall, skinny guy. Um, very like sunken eyes, kind of a haunted look to him. Like he's seen some deep shit, and you know, like at pretty much any sailor you've encountered. Um, and he's kind of sitting there playing with some like puzzle cube kind of thing going on. And as he was using approach, uh, he's like, uh, kind of eyes you up and he's like, what do you want? What are you, what are you fellas up to on this, this, uh, pretty beautiful day today? And it's like foggy and like, there's a slight drizzle coming down and it's dark as always. So like, he's clearly like being sarcastic. He addressed, he's addressing me and Krisa, because it's Krisa yeah, yeah, yeah. or it's Krisa. Well, I mean, that's that, that's what I understood. Are you both approaching him at the same time, or is someone going up front? And... My understanding would be that I'm going in more by myself, and Kreese is, uh he's nearby, but he's not like right next to me. So it's not okay. looking like we're together. Is that what you guys were thinking as yeah, well? I thought I was scouting ahead, even not even like. Yeah, it was my it was yeah. my understanding that Kreese's job was, was to scout ahead with the, um, not to the to the uh, um, the fence, but actually to the uh, the foghounds and to try to get the foghounds' attention on to you. So. Okay. So we're both working at the same time, but we're not walking to the fence together. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so he'll be uh, talking to you, uh, and and and. Uh, sorry, I totally missed that thing. That's my bad. I didn't understand that this was a joint investigation thing. So, uh, yeah. So he's talking to you, um, and actually, Krisa, um, you're not going very far to to approach the fog hounds. Okay, um, they're, they're visible like, from the fence. <laughs> they're like. They're like, if you go down uh, two blocks and then turn left, you can see their building in the distance. Um, okay, so my... It's not building as it is actually a warship parked at a dock. Um, they own a giant warship, so... So if the fence is, like, here, Krisa wants to approach towards the fence, you know, shortly after uh, Weaver walks up to the fence and then beeline it towards the fog <laughs> He wants to be visible for the whole, the whole situation. <laughs> like, okay, you see what I'm saying? So the foghounds, if they're looking at the fence, see Krisa, seeing Weaver, and then walk towards them. Okay. Hmm. Well, I think what we're gonna do is we'll because am I right? When 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 did you want to do a break, Matt? I don't. Oh, uh, any time. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll kind of get a shot of uh, Meyer talking to Weaver as he kind of approaches. And, and like, I think we'll look down the block and we'll see, like, Krisa pop out of the corner, like, looking. And, like, maybe a rat, like, kind of darts up your shoulder and nuzzles you and, like, down into your jacket. Um, and uh, and Meyer kind of says those, like, you know, he says the words to you and then, like, it cuts out and it's clearly just a shitty day out. And then I think we'll go on to a break before we cut back to the action. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys are having a good time here on uh, the third week of Season 2 of Blades in the Dark, The Gambit. Um, if you guys are enjoying the stream, you can make sure to hit the follow button, which I believe is just above Anthony now. Um, and, of course, you can follow us on Twitter for any updates about when we go live. We're going to go take a quick five-minute break, uh, and we'll be back for another hour of Blades in the Dark until 9 o'clock Pacific. So don't go anywhere. Thanks. <laughs>